You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. Studio with Lee, he's from the um, Sheppey Bowman. Lee, as always, it's uh, great to have you uh, here at the studio. Thanks for inviting me up. So I was hoping you could start off, I suppose, with a bit of an introduction and uh, tell us um, who are the Sheppey Bowmen and uh, why are you sort of different from other archery clubs? Right, well, we're a very small, uh, friendly archery club, obviously. Um, we're based on the island. Uh, the way we differ from other clubs, though, is that we practice uh, the more traditional style of archery, uh, which is known as archery by instinct. Although we do, from time to time, shoot at a target, we concentrate on shooting at the marks. Uh, we only allow traditional styles of bow, such as uh, long bows, horse bows and flat bows. Um, arrows are also as traditional as, as, as is sensible, though we do use uh, plastic knocks and things like that. Um, but the shelves must be made of wood, uh, fletchings must be feather, um, we do not do reenacting or dress up in green tights or anything like that, uh, but we do like to have a little bit of fun, but at the same time remembering that what we are playing with is, to all intents and purposes, a deadly weapon. So what is uh, archery by uh, instinct then? Well, when you see archers uh, in the Olympics, they have a sight on there and they have stabilisers, things to keep the bow steady. We don't have anything like that. We just basically have a bent stick with a bit of string. Uh, when we shoot at a mark, the archer isn't told how far away the mark is. You just have to look at it, use your brain, judge it. Using your own instincts, um, you, you shoot at it. That is something that does take a little bit of practice to master, but we can teach somebody to shoot. Uh, safely over a hundred yards in an hour. Um, Lee, what are uh, marks? Well, the, the idea of the marks goes back to the days when it was compulsory for uh, archery practice after church on a Sunday. On the way to the church, the archers would obviously have their gear with them, and to get in a little bit of it. Uh, extra practice and have a little bit of fun they would pick a tuft of grass or a pence post pile of rocks something like that and see who could shoot the closest to it uh, then more permanent marks were put in place and the most famous ones were in uh, the Finsbury and Southwark fields in London eventually they would be sponsored by local businesses or societies and although we know the names we cannot be sure what they actually looked like when we, Sheppy Bowman, go to um, a shoot with the Fraternity of St George, we normally... The, the marks are shields placed on a pole and are based on, the, based on the originals, what we think they may well have looked like. At Sheppy Bowman, we generally use marks that reflect the island's history, although we do have our take on one of the Southwark marks, the Bricklayer, which possibly stood within Bowshot, which is about 300 yards of where my dad was born. I also donated a copy of this mark to the fraternity, so occasionally from time to time when we go to a fraternity shoot, um, we, we get to shoot at it, and it's where we get the saying, wide of the mark or short of the mark. I was hoping you could tell us um, a bit about the uh, big anniversary this year, Lee. Right, it's the 600th uh, anniversary of the Battle of Agincourt. In uh, 1415, Henry V took an army to France and laid siege for a couple of months uh, on the town of Harfleur. <laughs> um, after they'd taken the fortress, um, he decided to take his men on a march through France and head towards Calais, which at the time was an English possession. On the way, after finding a crossing across the River Somme, he faced a massive French army who obviously wanted to stop him there and then. Uh, the next morning, which was St Crispin's Day, October the 25th, the armies 
uh, took battle. The French army outnumbered Henry's by about four to one, but Henry had between five and seven thousand English and Welsh archers who decimated the French knights as they charged. Uh, with a shooting rate of about five or six arrows in 30 seconds, the sky would have just gone black. Uh, I've, I've seen what the shooting rate is like with you know, about 100, and so with 5,000 it must have been awesome. Um, at the end of the day, uh, the French had lost somewhere between seven and 10,000 of their nobility to around 112 of Henry's men. This should have left the French throne wide open for the English king, but as his troops were now exhausted and suffering from things like dysentery and that, he continued his march on Calais, and after his return to England, his parliament would not or could not afford to fund another campaign into France. So uh, how was it marked? Clubs all around the country marked the occasion in their own way with special shoots here and there. As we shoot with the Fraternity of St George, we were lucky that our annual shoot in the grounds of the HAC, the Honourable Artillery Company, in Finsbury, London, uh, fell on the very day, the 25th of October. When we arrived, before we started shooting, we were all given a tot of rum to toast the Queen and Henry V. Uh, there was a priest there who did a, a blessing in the field for us, and Brian, who is the captain of the Fraternity of St George, recited the Crispin Day speech from Shakespeare's Henry V. Uh, my son was a flag bearer during uh, the blessing of the field. And then at the exact minute the battle was believed to have started, we shot our first arrows of the day, which were at some cardboard cut-out knights, um, which were a couple of hundred or 150 yards or so away. Um, we were then able to shoot at a ballistics gel knight, which was a bit of fun. Uh, and then we started shooting uh, at some marks. Uh, the first one that we actually shot was the Bricklayer's Mark, which I had donated, and that was quite an honour. Um, after we, after lunch, which was a, an army curry, um, we went and had a speed shooting competition, which consists of shooting as many arrows as you can at a mark, 120 yards away in 30 seconds, and this comes from when the enemy cavalry had got to within about 120 yards and the marshals would tell the archers to uh, drop their, lower their aim and shoot as quickly as they could. And then at the end of the day we were all given a special certificate and a special slow on badge to say we were there. Lee, I was uh, hoping you could let uh, our listeners know next, uh, where do you actually uh, shoot normally? Well, our home base is um, at Flynn's Bee Farm and uh, Tea Room in Brambledown. They've got a nice big field that they're kind enough to let us loose in. Uh, and we're there every other week unless it clashes with uh, a fraternity shoot. When we shoot, or when we go to a fraternity shoot, uh, there are a number of stunning country estates that we go to. Um, and we even get to shoot once a year in Windsor Deer Park. Um, there we do what, what's known as the roving mark so we'll shoot to one mark and then shoot to the next it's like playing golf with bows and arrows it's a lot of fun um, and like the Agincourt shoot we go once a year to uh, shoot in the grounds of the HAC this weekend just gone we were down at Scotney Castle near Tunbridge so we, we, we get around nicely and it's a lot of fun so uh, is it an expensive hobby? You can make it really expensive or you can keep the price down. Obviously the most expensive thing that you're going to get is your bow. You can get one from about £150 and I have seen bows uh, for £800. So they, they do get really expensive. Um, we would advise you the best places uh, to go to get one we all make our own arrows so that keeps that price down uh, we can show you how to make them it's very simple really uh, and of course 
once you have these you don't need to replace them every time you shoot though from time to time you may lose an arrow or two um, I have a homemade quiver um, and there are other things that you will need to get like uh, shooting gloves are always good thing to protect your fingers against the string and where you're shooting off your hand you need it's best to have a glove on the, the hand that you're holding the bow with um, there are other things that you can get that you don't really need but they do look pretty cool when they're hanging off your quiver so yeah it can be expensive but you can also keep the price down somewhat before you go uh, how can people uh, join well anyone who's interested if they uh, come along uh, try us out and see if they like us because as much as I love this sort of archery it's not everybody's cup of tea but we say come along for six visits and we don't charge you you just come along you you know see how it's done and all that see what we're about after that if you want to join we've got two different top ways of uh, or two options for joining one is you pay five pounds and then a pound every time you come or you pay 25 pound and that's it you don't pay any more for the year um, membership is from when you give us your membership money for a year so it's it's not like some places where membership runs from august to august so if you join in january you, you only you know you've got renew it in august it is from when you join um be because where we shoot and we always have our lunch at the bee farm um, we have to book a table and say how many's going so we need to know so it is best to contact us first and we can be contacted through our facebook group which is obviously sheppy bowman or there are contact details on our website which is www.sheppybowman.btck.co.uk Lee, it's been uh, great to have you back here at the studio. Thank you very much for telling our listeners uh, all about how you're getting on and uh, what you're doing at the Sheppy Bowman. Well, thanks for letting me come up and waffle. <laughs> That's fine. That is Lee um, telling us all about the Sheppy Bowman.